Well, we did it. We got those first two bulkheads positioned and mounted into the hulls. Wow, what a momentous occasion this week has been for us because we are now not working on separate pieces of the boat anymore. It's all starting to come together. Right, now with these bulkheads going in, we have begun the work of assembly and therefore, We'll be adding in all the rest of the bulkheads really quickly, and then uh, we're going to put the roof on top of this thing uh, a little early, but we're going to get it on there for shade purposes and uh, get the bridge deck built and raised up underneath and start building all the furniture out inside and all that good stuff. And it all began this week with those bulkheads. But in order to get that done, as you're about to see when we show you the rest of this video, we had a lot of prep and things that we had to do to make this work. And we thought we were going to do this yesterday on Saturday, but then another rain in our <laughs> historic year of rain in Southern California uh, was showed up and it was going to rain both Saturday and Sunday. And it, we're in between rain right now. In fact, it just started sprinkling just a little bit a minute ago. Uh, so we ran over here to uh, shoot this little intro and, and, and exit from our video this week at the lot and also to check on these holes to make sure that uh, water hadn't got in if we needed to um, shore up our rain system but no it, they're they're fine inside after the first rain yesterday but in about 30 minutes from now we're going to get about three hours of rain again so uh, that's why we're here checking this is why we thought we'd shoot this while we're here but let's show you all that prep we did and then how we put these in here and boy was it a little crazy at times uh getting them in but they went in and i do want to say that it went very well overall so we were very happy and pleased with the results so let's go show you the lead up and the putting of these bulkheads into the hulls It's a big week at the lot. We're gonna be putting those bulkheads in by the end of the week now. We finally got there. But I've got a whole list of stuff that we've gotta get done if we're gonna be ready for uh, Mr. Brian DeRuiter to come in with his bobcat and help us put these in place and get them sort of temp clamped in. So uh, Brian and Nick on Tuesday and I, and then a whole team of people are going to uh, work on Saturday to get this done this week. So part of our preparation for getting the bulkheads in this week is to get the forebeam ready because we've got to lower that in at the bow first because the bobcat can't, won't be able to get there later with all the bulkheads in the way. So we're going to go there, lift that forebeam and set it in. But in order to put the forebeam in, we have to prep the forebeam and that involves getting it trimmed off to the right length on the end at a certain angle and also cutting a slot in it to fit into bulkhead number one. And to figure all that out, I need bulkhead number one. So that's why I'm in where we store all our parts here, looking under the bulkhead area. And what I want to find here is bulkhead number one. And this might be it. I get it far enough out, I can read the label. That's bulkhead number four, not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for number one. I was wrong again. Bulkhead number one isn't in the white container. So now I'm in here with the larger uh, panels and uh, looking for bulkhead number one in the shipping crate. And right here are all other single bulkheads. So I'm thinking that it must be in here, and I'm looking for a tall, skinny one. It would be like this. There we go. Bulkhead number one. Finally found it. Okay, so I gotta get this one, and the other one must be right in the stack as well. Okay, I have a printout here of uh, 
the bulkhead. And this right here is the four beam coming in. So it gives me some measurements from outside of the bulkhead and the angle it's going to be. So from the center line on the bulkhead, uh, the angle I want is 130, excuse me, 361 millimeters and 430 millimeters out from the center line of the bulkhead. So that gives me some information there. Now this will be the camphor panel on this side over here because this is the chine right here. So this is the outside of the hull and this is the inside here. And uh, we've got a center line marked here in red. So I can work off that and get my measurement. It's Tuesday and our preparations for getting the bulkheads in on Saturday. And so today we're going to start out by sanding the fairing compound that we put on the length of the hull here. A lot of this is just scuffing it up or take off any little high spots uh, that we may have left uh, with a trowel uh, mark or something. But uh, mostly we just want to scuff it up and such. And we've got a couple of uh, rotary type sanders here that we're going to get in here and get to work. So Nick has showed up to help us on this, so I'm letting him sand the bow. I got it up to close to there. And uh, Brian's going to do a couple of little spots along the way. And we found that there's still a few areas where we need to put a bit more fairing compound. So once we're done with the sanding, we're going to mark those. And we're going to put a little bit more fairing compound into some of those spots. And then we'll sand that tomorrow morning before we glass uh, the hole. So we're almost done with the initial sanding. I've already marked all the little spots we still have to fix up to where Brian is. Uh, once Nick and Brian are done up here, I'll mark the rest of this. And then uh, we'll probably grab lunch and then come back and patch all these spots. So our goals for today are the primary one is sanding and fairing this uh, port canoe. And uh, we're well on the way to finishing the sanding. And then we'll, like I say, we'll do that uh, secondary fairing uh, after lunch. And then also we're going to want to cut the fiberglass and peel ply to apply to this hull because that's going to happen the following day, Wednesday. And so we've got to get that done. And I'd like to work on the ring catchment test system that uh, uh, we're working on. Here's our little test board. And uh, it only has a little bit of glass just to get the shape here. But on this back side, I've got to put uh, a cove on either side of thickened epoxy and then start putting some glass layers over that and see if we can't get this thing to be stronger. Right now it's pretty weak as you can see. But this is a very very thin piece of uh, fiberglass right now. We'll thicken this up and see if we can't get this uh, strong enough to work. Alright, let's give this a little try with some bearing compound here. What we're trying to achieve here is a uh, smooth curve right here so that the glass can come up and the same thing on the back side so that the glass can lay down on there. And so uh, when we do the cabin top we would flip it over so it would be up like this so that we could put this cove along the whole thing and let that set up and then glass it but it'll all be upside down at that time so it's just like working on it right here just that the whole roof will be there. And uh, we'll put the cove on and then we'll start layering glass over the top and uh, see how, uh, how many layers it takes. We've uh, sanded out the entire hull as far as the fairing goes. So Brian's working on cutting all of the peel ply and the fiberglass sheets for tomorrow. And while he's doing that, I'm gonna get in there and uh, 
finished the second round of uh, fairing uh, on to the hull and then we'll sand that tomorrow once it's set up early in the morning before we actually start glassing in all of the sheets that he's going to cut right now. Continuing our little test of the rain catchment system. Now that this uh, thickened epoxy is set up, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put on a couple layers of fiberglass here. We'll see how strong it gets with just those two layers. Okay, we'll let that set up and check it out tomorrow. Uh, and we'll see what, we got two layers on the bottom and two layers on the top with our thickened epoxy coves in there. And we'll see if we need three, four layers right now, two on each side. We have a few more of our fiberglass sheets to cut. We had to get another roll, which was stored back at my house. So we're cutting those this morning a little early before the rest of the people get here to start glassing the hull in. But I just wanted to bring up something. If you'll remember uh, earlier, I mentioned that we were having historically record rainfall in Southern California this year, the most in recorded history. Well, it's coming to bite us in the butt again because uh, this Saturday, it's gonna rain again all day. In fact, it starts Friday night and it's go all the way through the weekend. So just more rain, because we love rain. But we're not gonna let it deter us from getting these bulkheads in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work really hard uh, to make up some time today and tomorrow. And we're gonna put them in Friday instead of Saturday, just ahead of the rain. That way the ground's still dry and, and, and hard for the bobcat to come in and we don't have to delay even more days while we wait for the ground to dry out uh, after this rainy weekend. So we're getting those bulkheads in this week, but we just have to work a little hard to do it. So that's why we're here early and uh, we'll uh, get to work here and get it done. And we started uh, putting the fiberglass into the port hull. And so Brian and Todd uh, are wetting out the surface. Then we lay down the pre-cut fiberglass and uh, wet it out some more and give it a little squeegee rolling action and uh, move on to the next. Of course, once we get past the first uh, bulkhead number eight, we got to put that extra strip in. So that'll be going on before we move on down here. And then we can put peel ply on top of it after that. So just like the first uh, canoe over there, we're going to roll on down. Now today we started earlier because last time we were working late and uh, we would prefer to get done before it gets too late. So this looks like it's uh, rolling well. And I've got Dale over on the mixing today. That's Brian's brother and Todd's my cousin. You've seen both Dale and Todd before if you've watched our videos. And that's gonna help a lot having uh, four people instead of just Brian and I, which would be very difficult. Today is our prep day for putting the bulkheads in tomorrow. And uh, we're doing that a day early because the rain's coming on Saturday, as I mentioned. And uh, so we've got to get everything done today. And today is Thursday. Today is our normally hard day off, but uh, we're going to in here and work and do the, the prep work for tomorrow. And we'll take the rainy day off on Saturday instead. So what we're doing here is we're building some stands, two of them. 
and they're going to go all the way up at the bow up there where you can see the four beam over there because our problem is that once we put the bulkheads in we can't drive our bobcat up the middle of this anymore and that four beam is very heavy and so we need to lift that up over the boat and the issue is let me show you that so the bottom of the four beam here where it comes down is actually above the canoe it's up about here sorry let me point better it's up about here and hovering in the air and so it's, it's not down into the hull so we have to build the rest of this boat up before we can actually mount this four beam properly but we've got to get this four beam across here now because we can't get the bobcat in later so what we're doing is we're going to build those stands and we're going to take the four beam we'll set it into these stands it'll be hovering above the canoes and it'll just sit that way for however long it takes us to get the sides of the boat up there where we want to deal with that and then at that point all we have to do is sort of lower it to the right position a few inches and we can do that with muscle power we just can't lift it which is 10 feet in the air uh, or so uh, without uh, the bobcat so that's why we got to build these today so that we can set that on them let it sit there for a while and uh, then we can put our bulk kids in the same day that we put that four beam in We've got a few things to go in the morning, but not too much. We've got our braces ready to hold the four beam here. We've marked our positions for where the bulkheads go in, but we haven't raised these cradles over here because remember that the boat is level this direction, is level this direction, but the two holes are at two different levels. Even though they're, they're both level, one of them's higher than the other. And this one's got to come up about precisely about 3 16 of an inch. So what we did is we went and bought a 3 16 inch cement board waterproof that we can put underneath of these cradles to bring it up to the right height. So one for each board. Uh, we don't have a way of putting that in there right this second because we need some jacks to lift it to slide that under. So we're going to bring jacks early in the morning and get that done and a couple other small things before the bobcat arrives around 11 a.m. And then we'll start the process of uh, putting in the major bulkheads. Today uh, is bulkhead day, but before we can put the bulkheads in, we had to level this, the height of this canoe, as I mentioned before. And so we put a uh, cement board underneath of this one, and we're gonna go put a cement board underneath of the bulkhead number five next. This was six. Well, basically, we have a jack on each side with some two by fours going through. And we just take it up about a half an inch. Tell me when you're ready. Uh, can we come my way? Uh, yep. Like four inches or so? Yep. All right, cool. what you do? All right. You probably have to go your way, so. Pretty close to the end of the other. Yep, looks good. And down we go. All right. And that's to do it. So we'll get at the laser level and double check it right now, but according to what we measured, that should take taken care of it. Well, the holes are level now in all directions and the right heights and everything. Got that all done. 
They're unloading the bobcat right now to put the bulkheads in, but uh, there's a few little things we gotta get cleaned up and ready for them. So while they unload that, I'm preparing things. Right backing up. All right, so that will just sit there now, sort of in position. It's probably about, I'd say, a foot high from where it's gonna be later. But uh, we need it up there in the air so that uh, later, when we can't get the bobcat in here to lift it up there, it's already up there. And all we have to do is uh, lift it a little bit to take out this uh, jig in the middle here and uh, set it down into where it goes once the holes are built up to where it meets them and can hold it. Time for bulkhead number five. First bulkhead, well, I guess you could count, you know, 11, the very tail end of this, but the first crossing bulkhead. Kit number five. The first one in, spanning the boats. We've got it all leveled. It's all glass. Well, it's all glued in. Um, we've a thickened epoxy along the bottom edge of it to seal it completely. But of course, we'll be tabbing that in later. But right now, it's uh, setting up. We've got braces, four of them, holding it uh, so that it's not getting any twist or tilt. Everything on it is perfectly level. Sweet, lunchtime. We'll get to Big Bertha next. All right, time to bring Big Bertha in to get it in over the hole. So we have to raise it high as we can almost and then tilt it back to clear the bottom.
So we put a bead of thickened epoxy down here and uh, we'll be laying that in in just a moment. So we gotta, we gotta put a bead on the other side over there and uh, then we'll lower it both out at the same time and Brian will get one lined up here and while I get the other one lined up. We did it! The four beam bulkheads five and six are in. Big Bertha is across. It's all uh, epoxied in at the bottom and we've got braces on both sides. Now we just gotta prep for rain because of the storm coming tonight. Raining all weekend. So we've gotta close up all of this stuff now. That'll take us another hour and a half or so and it's getting a little late, but we've got it accomplished. Very exciting, so happy that we did it. So that's how it went. What a week. We had some challenges along the way, but nothing that damaged or hurt anything. And we we're just so excited to see these bulkheads fit. Right. You know, um, yes, uh, we made the holes on the forms and the forms are the same exact shape as the bulkheads. So in theory, uh, they should fit. But then we did some glassing on the inside and that changed the shape just slightly and we did have to shave the bulkhead number five the one up in front but just a tiny little skinny bit of shave to make it fit nicely and strangely enough big bertha fit in there like a glove went right in so uh, that was great so uh, all went well there now there were she mentioned that we had a couple of hiccups uh, <laughs> we had a little problem with the uh, bobcat um, we found out when you turn it off and and we did that a couple times and then turned it back on again that uh, the hydraulics do some weird things and it suddenly jumps. And so, uh, you know, we almost tossed one of our bulkheads into the air, but <laughs> it didn't come off. <laughs> so uh, all was well. Um, nothing can, was damaged and, and everything. So that went, that went great. And I'd like to uh, do a special thanks to uh, Nick and um, Dale Tassie and my cousin Todd who all came down and not just worked, but worked some extraordinary long hours because that was the only way that we could get a full day ahead of our plan to do it on Saturday and do it on Friday. And so, um, you know, we worked some 10, 12 hour days with them. And uh, I just want to thank them for the very, very hard uh, labor that they put in to make sure that this happened. Because we wanted to reach this milestone and uh, it was critical to us because we want to get this boat back on track and we do plan to get it, uh, you know, the, the assembly of the shell done um, probably over the next six, seven, eight months uh, so that the whole boat is sitting here then. Now, that doesn't mean the boat's done. That's just the assembly of the shell. But this is, marks the beginning of that. And so we're uh, very excited about all that. So thank you all for watching this week's video. Uh, we do appreciate that. And okay. thank you so much to all our viewers and particularly our patrons, which are listed here. Thank you so much. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click on the bell icon to be notified of our next video. And in that next video, we're gonna to get to work on putting the rest of these bulkheads in. Now, not the ones that go across the stern right here that span there, we have to keep those out because we've gotta put the diesel engine in <laughs> oh, here. Boy. Uh, before we can seal them up because the bobcat has to come in to lower it in and we can't mm -hmm. have the bulkheads in the way. So we'll leave these last couple bulkheads off the back. But there's a whole bunch of them that go down each hull and we're going to get to those and start getting those put in. Plus some, there's some, uh, as you'll get to see, some temporary bulkheads that just help us with the shape of the sides and the, and the decks. Uh, but that's all going to go in very rapidly and we expect to have all of those bulkheads uh, in and glassed in and everything within the next two weeks. So you'll see a lot of that in next week's video. So we'll see you then. Bye. All right, bye.